everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I am going to be doing another Nitro setup video since it's another Monday. So I'm going to begin, as always, by covering the equipment farming results of last week. And the previous week, we had 13 SSRs. This current week that I'm talking about, which is from the 15th to the 21st, I got 10 SSRs, which is still quite acceptable. Okay? Crystal count wise, as well, the previous week I had 766 crystals and no vouchers on hand. The current week I now have 8 vouchers and 1517 crystals on hand. In addition, I did do a 10 summon uh, on the banner, although I didn't get anything from that. So, in total, what you can say is the 10 voucher summon is equal to 880 crystals. So, I basically got 8 new vouchers and 1,631 crystals, which is a decent increase overall, right? So it's a decent increase and hopefully I'll continue to build up this kind of type of increase every single week in preparation for the upcoming banners. We'll see how that goes. Okay. Moving on, in terms of the SSR gear that I farmed, right? What I've got from the Tylus Trials last week was another Slayer's Emblem, so that makes my 6th Slayer's Emblem to level 30. Okay. I gambled 300... Uh, I gambled 3 times on the weapons and got 300 ore. Gambled 3 times on the helmets, also got 300 ore. And I did not do any kind of gambling on the armors. So I just don't have that much um, ore column ore to do full gambles right now, especially since I am very focused on buying epic martial spirits at this time to upgrade existing gear. Other than that, from dailies and joint battles, there were, as I mentioned, 10 SSRs, and they were a Jorman Gender's Eye, which I ordered. Actually, no, I kept that. Sorry, let me take that back. I kept that for now because I have various Jorman Gender's Eyes at like level 20 or so. I have an Azure Legend, which raises up my first one to level 40. I got a carbon fiber armor, which I ordered. Arcane battle garb, which I kept because it makes another uh, second level 40 arcane battle garb for now. So that means I have three copies of them. And I got the rest was like an assault headgear or an Aces helmet or carbon fiber helmet or. And on Saturday, I actually picked up a King's crown, which is my fifth one. Um, nice to get. I don't know if I'm going to use it because I actually don't have quite that many flyers and assassins but we'll see right keeping it on hand is important that's the main thing other than the king's crown on sunday i also got a yagrasol reef that's my fourth yagrasol reef um i only have one built to level 50 so the other three are just kind of sitting in my they're really just sitting there in my bag okay finally i also did six random accessory box purchases and i got a lone star armlet out of those six so not too bad overall, you know. At least 10 SSRs is a very decent amount, and it gave me a good amount of ore to use, okay? So, but in terms of actual gear that I really want, it's actually pretty bad, because all the gear that I want are shown on this page, and I didn't get a single one of them, as usual, right? So, Extreme Magic Bow, right? I continue to want them for, let's say, Hie, Joshua, Zerida, right? Mimir's War Axe, I need one for Yusuke. Tenyo's Headdress, you really want pretty much one for every single... Um, every single holy or demon character that you would use, more or less, right? For Armor, Last Rites, pretty much the same as the Tenyo's Headdress. You want one for every single flyer or every single assassin. Okay. And of course, Yusuke can use one too. And finally, accessories, right? Twilight Star, you want them for, let's say, Sonya, Akaya, Zerida, Diharto, you know, uh, Juggler Plushy, Liana, Iris, Tieris, Source of Metal, let's say, Bozal, Landius, Juggler, Listel, and then Apex Boots, Reen, Sakura, and Shalinka, right? So there's a whole bunch of items that I still need. Um, yeah, not getting them, you know. We'll see if this continues to continues to be like this or if I'll get more of these. These are all really just end game PvP gear that I want. So finally, about shard farming, I have made a few adjustments here. First of all, it is currently the 22nd, so we're right at this point, and I'm continuing to farm three Ares, three Hiei, and three Gizaroth. However, when Hiei is done on Saturday, 
I'm changing the farming to replace 3 Hie with 3 Landius. And I'm not going to farm Landius much, I'm just getting 8 shards of Landius. The reason for these 8 shards is so that I can do some trading on the couple's banner on July the 9th. Right? July the 9th is when the couple's banner will appear and Landius will trade for Angelina shards. So I can trade 50 Landius shards for 60 Angelina shards. So those 8 shards I'm farming now, given that the couple's event runs for two weeks will allow me to farm 42 more shards, correct? So 42 plus 8 gives me the 50 shards so that I can do trading. But that assumes that I am going to do this trade yet. Uh, I'm actually not entirely sure I will. So that's why I'm just farming 8 shards for now. You know, That's just in case, right? And of course, you never know. I may get some bad luck and get an off banner Landius, for example. And if I do, then right there, I'm going to trade those Landius shards right away and I'm not going to bother with farming up his shards. So that's why I do the 8 just in case, but we'll wait and see there. All right? I'm not going to actually farm shards of this specific character until the couple's event is actually up and running. Lanford I already have 15 shards of due to having done his Gate of Fate, so he will also be available for trading to get Mystery Knight shards. So more or less I'm set up to get this up and running. So other than Landius, and uh, and Lanford, right? I'm currently in a transition phase where I decided that I'm going to farm up some Dehardo shards, right? My Dehardo is currently at five stars, so I just need 50 shards now to finish him off, and so it's a good time to just farm Dehardo right now since I have the availability. I'm aware that next week on June the or on July the second, there will be the new banner. Right? And that new banner is Elusia and Shalinka. I'm not going to draw on that banner at all. Okay, uh, I can't afford to. So that banner I'm just going to skip. And thus, my priority is the couple's banner instead. Okay, So Elusia and Shalinka, I'm going to skip entirely. I'll do preview videos of these two heroes later. But for me personally, I'm not do drawing on that banner. So with all this covered, Let's now move on to talk about the in-game portion. So I briefly mentioned it during the shard farming show uh, that I shown, but I am going to have Hie done this week. Okay, so he's gonna hit five stars, and that's quite important because this weekend I had a joint, I had a Apex Arena match where Hie with his AOE followed by single target strike failed to kill off an enemy Iris. Right, So the fact that Hie can fail to kill an Iris like that meant that clearly my Hie needs to be 5 stars to be able to do so. So that upgrade will make a big difference for Hie in terms of the assassinations. So I'm looking forward to this change. Other than Hie, um, Gizaroth is steadily being grinded up as well. And Gizaroth, in fact, should be mostly complete by next week. Right, He's going to hit 5 stars in 10 days. So once Gizaroth hits 5 stars, I'm going to probably rotate him into my party and see how he works out. So that's the second character. So Hie, Gizaroth. Ares is continuing to be farmed up for now. He's going to take a while before he's usable. I generally consider characters only usable when they hit 5 stars. So I have not implemented Ares into my party yet at all. Right? In the first place, you want to change Ares between either single target strikes with noble charge or AoE attacks. In order to be able to single target strike properly, your character needs to be built up. So he's a work in progress, right? I'm going to need 90, 30 days to get Ares to 5 stars before I can start using him. So we'll see there, right? And then there's going to be even more time to get him up to 100, get, the, get him up to 6 stars, because that's another 150 shards. So he's very much a work in progress. I probably won't have Ares built until really season, the next season. So it is what it is. But I don't mind building him up now steadily and then having him available for me for the following season. He might be available for the playoffs, but no guarantee there. We'll see. So those are the three characters I'm farming up right now. And you know, I already mentioned that once Hiei hits five stars, I'm going to stop building him. I can't afford to. There's other priorities like finishing off the Dihardo that needs 50 more shards. And then after that, I should be at the stage where 
my uh, where the next banner with Licorice comes out. Right, Licorice is Lolly Bozel. She's another AOE attacker and Dark Fashion Buffer. So I'm looking forward to getting her. Um, I think she's going to make a big difference in my box. So we'll see about that. So looking forward to getting the Lolly Bozel as well to strengthen my box even further. So those are the current characters that I'm primarily focusing on grinding up at this time, right? And then we'll see what happens after Lolly Bozo. Okay. So other than the shard farming that I fully covered now, in terms of gambles for this week, um, I mentioned how I'm buying Epic Martial Spirits like crazy, right? To upgrade existing gear. So I currently only have 400 ore column ore, so I'm not actually going to do any gambles right now at all. Uh, there's more gear I have to build at this time, and I just don't think that it's worth doing any gambles. You know, I might just use it to buy rare enchant packs as well as epic martial spirits instead of gambling. We'll see there. Haven't decided yet. I'll do it later this week. Okay. In terms of enchant scrolls, I actually used 50 enchant scrolls today, and unfortunately it didn't really pay off. Um, I used it on the Bloodline Magic Armor as well as the Dragon Slayer Gram. And Bloodline Magic Armor continues to have disenchant with 5% attack, 11% defense, and 4% magic defense, which is okay, but not exactly godlike because I don't have any hit point increase. But still, defense and magic defense should hopefully balance out, and the attack, of course, always helps. As for Dragon Slayer Gram, I currently have a 9% attack, 6% hit points, and 3% defense on this. I really do want more attack. Right? The main goal ultimately is to have 15% attack and then maybe some defense and hit points ideally. Right? That would be ideal or 15% attack with hit points or 15% attack with 5% defense, whatever. So that's the goal. You know, We'll see if I can get such a role. But that is what I'm aiming for. I do want my Lendius to be as tanky as possible. And the Overlord's badge I'm going to leave as is because I eventually want to replace this Overlord's badge with a Swordsmith medal. So the Fury of Tear is okay. Bloodline Magic Armor is solid. I may look at replacing Disenchant, but Dragon Slayer Gram I am very much looking to improve. I want a 15% attack at the bare minimum. So that is my Landius Enchants at this time. And I'm going to continue to roll because I think I'm going to have to roll on both Landius and Juggler for now. Right? My Juggler, temporarily, I've given him the Swordsmith Medal to see how this plays out. And I think I'm actually going to have to reroll one of these enchants to get some magic defense, right? We saw my juggler get annihilated by a Yulia. So clearly my magic defense is a bit too lacking, compared, especially compared to my defense value. So I'm going to have to look at trying to reroll one of these, probably this juggler's gift to get a better enchant on it, right? Right now it's just some hit points, some defense. I probably want to get a better balance roll on this. So that's another adjustment I'm making for Juggler. So there's actually two characters that need some re-enchanting. Both of my tanks, really. So that's my that's where I, my focus is on at this time. Fortunately though, we do get more scrolls this week. And the scrolls will come from Magic Tower Conquest. Because this event will end soon, right? Magic Tower Conquest ends on the 25th. And when it ends, the ranking rewards will give you around either... I'm currently top... 101 to 500, which gives me 60 advanced enchant scrolls. If I get into the top 100, I get another extra 20. So that's what I'm aiming for. So I'm go I'm currently ranked 122. I can definitely make it into the top 100, and I'm going to try to my hardest to get into the top 100 so I can get that extra 20 enchant scrolls for re-rolling my tank enchants. Right. So it's really not that far for me. And in terms of the cycle. I have finished the cycle ones. There is still this feat though. I still need to kill 42 more enemy heroes in match battles. Once I get those 42 kills, and hopefully that'll push me up to the top 100, I'm done with this event entirely. Okay, so those are pretty much I think the last two things I want to do for events. Oh, of course, there is also the ongoing limb time Spring Spirit joint battles for this week. I'll do videos of every single joint battle, uh, releasing them as the event occurs. Right. And other than that, 
in terms of Apex Arena, Apex Arena this weekend, 1739. You know, I'm much lower than I should have been for sure because I really fool around too much in Apex Arena. Right? Uh, people who have been watching me play know for a fact that every now and then, instead of going for the win, I experiment with things like trying to use Zerida to attack an enemy Listel, even though Listel is at full hit points and probably has less rates. Right? So I do odd things like that occasionally and it causes me matches that I would otherwise win or should otherwise win. So that's why I'm currently at 1739. But ultimately, I'm frankly, I'm not in that much of a rush to push up to the maximum, right? To the top tier, you know. I mean, pushing up to the top tier gives you some additional enchants, okay? So more rare enchant gift packs, more arena mastery, a bit more trinity crystals, and so on. But the drawback of pushing up to there is that ultimately my limitation is actually gold, okay? Even getting all these enchant scrolls, I actually don't have the gold to use all the enchants as well as build up gear. So that's why even though I can get more enchants, I kind of... it doesn't really matter for me, okay? It's different if I do do some purchases. Like for example, if you're going to, I don't know, convert your some crystals into gold, right? Or if you recharge for some gold purchases, like the gold pack every week, that would make a difference. But since I don't do either, I can go without all the enchant gift packs ultimately. So that's why I'm not in that much of a rush to push into gold rank. You know, as long as I make it, it's fine. And right now, being in or being in gold too is fine for me. You know, eventually, for sure, I'm going to make it into Langrisser. And once I do, it is what it is, you know? And I think that's pretty much it for now. I haven't really changed up any of my character's gears recently. It's just been trying to get... I am realizing I have to re-enchant my two tanks a bit. And then once I've done that, I'll look into upgrading some gear of other characters. Yeah. So last but not least, I should be talking about my training ground. And the training ground adjustments is I realized that I need to upgrade my flyer soldiers and aquatic up training ground a bit. So that's what I'm focusing on. Uh, I started upgrading the, uh, the hit point increases here. So for now, I've done two upgrades this weekend. So that this was at level three, it's now at level five. Okay. So, and I'm going to be focusing my grinding on upgrading the hit point enchants for now. So my goal is to get this attack, well, get the hit points up to 70%. Okay. So with 70% hit points, 70% attack, I should be okay with my flyer training ground. And at that, at that point, I may look into the other training grounds after that. So that is my transition for now. So I'm just focusing on the flyer and aquatic at this time. Get this up for my tank, because my cavalry training ground is pretty solid. You know, I could do some hit point upgrades here as well, maybe finishing off the defense and magic defense increase, but I think the soldiers here are doing perfectly fine. You know, the Royal Cavalry are being very tanky, I may also upgrade the Templar Knights to level 10, but that will be more for the playoffs, right? So I have some time to do this, there's no rush to get the Templar Knights up to level 10. And yeah, so for now, my primary focus is finish up the Flyer and Necrotic, finish up the Cavalry, then maybe look into the other training grounds after that. So, there we have it. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you found this video useful to you. you know, just doing some minor upgrades, you know, changing my focus. What I was told was that, generally speaking, as a side note for training grounds, if you have 70% attack and 70% hit points, the training ground is fine. You know, the extra defense and magic defense are more nice to have. But the main goal is if every training ground can have 70% attack and 70% hit points, you can use those soldiers very, very effectively. Okay. So, on that final point, I hope you enjoyed this video, and Nitro out.